National Population Commission providing demographic data for national development. The federal government is appealing to development partners and the private sector to contribute in cash and kind towards meeting the funding gap for the May 2023 population and housing census. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, made the call while declaring open a high-level partners engagement to galvanize support for the census. Clem Agba, Minister of State, Budget and National Planning, said commitment of the Governor's Forum for the project is good but rationalized that because census is a federation activity, the governors should consider giving approval to the Federal Ministry of Finance to source for funding from the federation account to partly execute the census. Speaking in Abuja, Clem Agba revealed that the digital green and transformative census will meet international best practices. Quite a number of activities have been undertaken which includes the conduct of a trial census. So government has already demonstrated a high level of financial and political commitment to the census project in spite of the election cost and activities. So it's a very big decision to decide to do a census in the year that you are doing elections because elections don't come cheap, census also does it come cheap. So if a government decides to do both in the same year, it only goes to show you the commitment of the president in ensuring that he leaves a legacy behind that will help us in our planning. Because it's not just enough to know the number of people, but just also to understand the demographics. Where do these people live? What are the amenities that they require? Uh, currently, do they have schools? Do they have hospitals? And that's why we are also using the grid, uh, uh, grid three technology here, uh, which is the Joe Spatial technology. So it will show us the amenities that are available in the various uh, LGAs across the country. So the total requirement for this census, including the post-census activities, is 869 billion. This is about 1.88 billion US dollars. When you hear the numbers, they really look very huge. But just like Ula said a few minutes ago, Censuses all over the world, the average is between four to six dollars. However, in the United States, they spend sixteen dollars per person. In Botswana, they spend about ten dollars per person. So Nigeria six dollars per person, you will agree with me, is very, very uh, reasonable. So far, the government has spent 291.5 billion. Naira, which is $632 million. This is about 46% of the requirement for the census. I know this time around we are not just doing only the population census, we are also doing the housing uh, uh, census. So the additional requirement for the critical items to ensure the census is done is 327.2 billion naira. This is about 709.9 .9 million US dollars. 
Abdul Latif Shitu, an executive director of the Nigeria Governors Forum Secretariat, noted that the meeting is an opportunity to ensure better coordination and pledge their support to the population and housing census. The United Nations Resident Coordinator, Matthias Schmel, disclosed that the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals depends on the availability of fundamental data on population size, growth distribution and characteristics of the population at all levels. Now, the capital-intensive nature of a population and housing census makes it difficult for countries to conduct it on its own. In this regard, having the international partners out at this meeting is necessary and commendable. As you will hear if you've not heard already, there is a sizable resourcing gap that needs to be bridged to get the census across the finishing line. Allow me thus to respectfully urge on behalf of the United Nations all invited donors, the private sector, foundations, including the oil and servicing companies and major construction companies to consider very seriously providing financial and technical assistance to this crucial undertaking. Arguably, <laughs> arguably, the country must conduct a credible census to ensure it will have data available for evidence-based policy making and seriously accelerated socioeconomic development of the country. For the International Monetary Fund, good data is important for good policies. Census is expensive. It's a huge effort. It takes a lot of effort from the Ministry of Finance, uh, for uh, ministries, for the government of Nigeria. Uh, resources were allocated for that. We are very grateful to the leadership of the ministries who actually made that a strong priority. But it's a very expensive exercise everywhere. And it's very important then that everyone participates and contributes to this effort because this is a national objective. It's not only the objective of the ministries. So we are here today to ask everyone to cooperate as best as possible for the successful census of 2023. The United Nations Population Fund is providing significant technical and financial support to the census program. While a basket fund managed by the UNFPA will be established for the redemption of the pledges. It's been said by many of you, Nigeria needs evidence. We need to know what does this great country look like. We need to understand that everyone counts. We need to understand that if we don't know that, we will continue to make a lot of hit and possibly a lot of miss in our decision making. We guesstimate today that 70% of the population is under 30. Now, a lot of that population is also under 18. Many of them would always now have started to produce the next generation. How are we going to educate them if we don't know where they are? How are we going to ensure that there's access to health care? We have the Minister of Power here. How are we going to make sure that we have a grid that covers in the right spaces and that we expand that in the right phases? All of this evidence is what a census brings to the table. So yeah, we were very challenged almost four years ago. And I would like to also commend the government, because many have done that. But I also want to say the complexities of a census is mind-blowing. The, pre the preparatory work that has to be done how we demarcate every single LGA in this country, understand all the structures in this country where people dwell, designing a proper questionnaire, testing it, having the digital solutions to work. So I would also like to stand here and recognize my chairman, my digital chairman, who has provided us with a digital census that is state of the art and award winning globally. So please congratulate also NBC. Tony Elumelu, a former bank chief executive, revealed that Nigeria's population is estimated to reach 400 million by 2050. Hence, the need to get credible data to drive development and create opportunities for growth. The census will affect how we allocate resources in Nigeria. 
and so many other important decisions. So it is important that the process is credible and above board. Today, Nigerian population estimates uh, Nigerian population estimates and demographic profile are unclear and projections fairly debatable. Census figures and population distribution have, unfortunately, in most developed countries and here inclusive, become politicized. Population figures have ramifications for revenue allocation, office allotment, legislative representation and power, and even elections. The stakes are therefore high for various interest groups. We therefore need to act for our nation as a whole and the next generation by making sure we have a credible outcome. And there are people in this room, outside of this room, private sector development organizations. I'd like to see this opportunity to request call on everyone, let's work together, let's support the uh, government, let's support the uh, National Population Commission and Finance Ministry <laughs> to make sure that the process uh, is uh, adequately resourced so that we can get the right outcome. Mansoor Ahmed, Executive Director, Stakeholder Management and Corporate Communication, Dangote Group, promised to support the May 2023 Population and Housing Census. Several speakers at the Abuja meeting equally pledged their commitment towards bridging the funding gap for the census, while the chairman of the National Population Commission promised to utilize in a transparent manner and judiciously too all funding for the census. I want to use this opportunity to thank uh, uh, everyone here for the time we've spent and the commitments given, and uh, to assure that the uh, National Population Commission will conduct for Nigeria a credible census. Everybody counts? You count. You count. You count. The National Population Commission has trained trainers that will further train enumerators that are to carry out the 2023 Population and Housing Census in May 2023, as it relates to those with special needs. This workshop on NPC Project Team on United Nations Adopted Methodology is part of steps to ensure that no one is left behind during the census. Two staff of the National Population Commission spoke to Population Timeline at the NPC Situation Room, venue of the training. The main purpose of this training is to sensitize more about questions on disabilities. And the WIA Washington group has a set of six questions which will be canvassed during this National Population Announcing Census in 2023. All these six questions will be canvassed and to ask people with disabilities things how they go through with their daily activities, like question on how do you, when you, with seeing, how do you, how clearly do you see, with, even within hearing, with a, you were enhanced with glasses, and we have four options on each of these questions. So, staff feels critical, feel it critical to come and build a capacity, because we, if we don't have an understanding of the Washington group of questions that is a global and uh, agreed or standardized questions for um, collecting information on persons living with disability. So they needed to come and beef a capacity to build our knowledge. Jake Epele of Tough Africa gave a presentation on skills for interaction with persons with disabilities. For him, once you have a wrong mindset, you will be unable to serve a person with disability because the right perception provides room for the right accommodation. This is a full-fledged young woman without disability. And she said, no, I don't, I don't. So to her, 
To have albinism is to have freckles. To have albinism is to be poor. To have albinism means that the society have rejected you. You know. So what happened in that instance? Wrong mindset. They have just instilled in her wrong mindset. So if you have the wrong mindset, you will not be able to maximize the right skill set. So While stating that he is proud of his skin color, he however appealed to Nigerians to always use the correct terms in addressing persons with disability. For example, it is wrong to say disabled person or handicapped, but correct to say person with disability. Similarly, it is wrong to say crippled and correct to say person with physical disability, according to J.K. Pele. Some participants told population timeline that knowledge gained comes handy ahead of the May 2023 population and housing census. You no, know, this training will, be, will cascade it down, will also have a way of running training uh, order to train other since that people with regard to population census. So this training is an eye opening. It gives us a necessary skill on how to do disability inclusion. Well, this training has actually opened my mind to a lot. Categorizing them, also using your mindset as said by Mr. Jake Epele, who is the CEO of Tough Africa. And um, he's, he has said a lot about the mindset, the um, intellectual set and Today, I am taking this information even to the field and also on how to interact when you see those people with disability. You don't just stigmatize them, you don't um, segregate them, you bring them closer, interact with them because they are, um, um, what, what will I put it, the, 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 the issues they have, like the non hearing, the non, not seeing, or different situations they have, cannot stop their ability or their capacity to function in every aspect of life. Staff of the Public Affairs Department of the National Population Commission recently gathered to bid farewell to two of their senior colleagues who retired from service. Rabiat Sani Isa left the service as Deputy Director, while Celestina Onwamezi, who was absent on the occasion, left the service as a Director. Led by the Director of Public Affairs, colleagues of Rabiat and Celestina commended them for their sacrifice and contributions to the department and wish them well in their future endeavors. You can always trust her. She is one of the stabilizing factors in the department. If there are things going on wrong, she will be quick, you know, to tell us that things are not right. And then, if there are people outside talking not favorably about the commission, she will come out very clearly to defend her. I wish you good health, that's the first thing. When you have good health, you have every other thing. Yes. You know, and in addition to that, you will not lack anything good. Yes. She, she, you can provoke her easily, but she's a very, very amiable, yes. calm and kind. Pray as a department for you that you have good health and that the Lord will prosper your ways, that you eat the fruit of your labor. Uh, IGI we have known for a very long time. We were together in Nyo State in the 90s. So later she transferred to the headquarters. So since that time, I know that she has been a very jolly person. Within seven and six census, she was posted to Kaduna, where I was working. We did all the market rally with her in the, throughout Kaduna State. So she's not new to me, even though I was not opportune to work with her in the same state till late last year, when I came on transfer from Kaduna. Since that time, she has been advising me, giving me good, uh, telling me all the things that are going on in the department, putting me through on so many issues. I really enjoyed staying with Haji Alaji. Very firm to a fault, but beneath that firmness, you see a caring sister, a thoughtful sister. She will tell you how it looks like. You either take it or you leave it. Her anger does not boil beans. 
<laughs> you know why I said it? Because deep down, you see a lovely person. Hadia is someone when we came in, she took us into her fold as a mother. Hadia calls black, black, white is white. There are people that join service with us and uh, today they are no more. Some did not get to the end of their service years. So when you retire and you are still in good health, it's something to thank God for. She's a national figure. So they are all here to represent themselves here as state director. We do not have only one, we have two in attendance. Thank you for coming. And uh, for all others that have come from other departments too, is that it has only attest to the kind of person our idea is. Allow me to congratulate our dear sister who is going out today, not because she's tired, but because she has attained the retirement age of 60 years. You will always be remembered as hardworking, team player, honest and diligent, who contributed positively to the department and particularly to the commission at large. We have all enjoyed working with you. Lessons learned from you will be handy when carrying out our assignment. I like you here, don't worry. <laughs> She's such a pleasant person. And also a professional to the core. People want to do things the right way. She speaks the truth and she speaks from her mind. Magnanimity in her honestly reflect a motherhood, a symbol of motherhood. But Ajia, I wish you well, good days, long term, in your retirement. And God that will do it for you, we that will follow sooner or later, God should do it for us. Amen. I say thank you to you all, who continue to call each other on phone, to show each other love. Please, for those my colleagues that are not here, if in one way or the other they feel I have offended them, please extend my love to them. The world is very short. National Population Commission, providing demographic data for national development.